Hey guys, welcome back to the channel of Jimmy is Promo, and today we're going to take a look at six features that you should definitely try out on your Samsung Galaxy devices. Now, the first one that I want to cover is for anybody who plays any sort of game on your phone. It doesn't matter if it's high intensity, if it's something very chill like Zen Idol or Pokemon Go, or if it's Sudoku, whatever it may be. It's a way that you're able to still play your game without getting out of the game entirely. Because if I get out of this, then I'm not you know accumulating as much points but what you're able to do is you can open this up and you have a shortcut bar and it's a way that you can open up an application inside of the of your game so then this way you don't have to get out of it if you need to send a text message to somebody if you needed to call somebody you can do it right from the screen without getting out of the application if you have to google search something you know if you need to use a calculator for if that is the game that you're using so there is a lot of stuff that you can do inside of Game Launcher and Game Booster, but I only want to highlight this one right here, which is this shortcut bar. So how you're able to get all of this set up is that you first want to enable your game launcher. So as you scroll down inside of your settings, you just want to search for advanced features. Now inside of advanced features, this is where you turn on game launcher. And all it's going to do is add this little icon into your home screen or your application tray, and then it's going to put all of your games in one spot there's a bunch of different ways you can view your games and now on the very bottom right hand side inside of more this is where you want to go inside of game booster so game booster is just a part of game launcher so once you activate game launcher you have game booster sitting right here now this is where you have that shortcut bar so once you turn on the shortcut bar now you're able to do exactly what i just mentioned from before the only thing you'd have to do is you can now set up which applications you would like this you know, to basically work with. So if I open this up, you're gonna tap on this little icon here. All of these might be blank for you. Uh, you can tap on any of them or you can tap on those three little dots. And this is where you can select up to four applications. It doesn't have to be four, but you can go up to four. So if maybe it's just you know messages and phone or maybe messages and calculator, whatever it may be, uh, that is pretty much all you'd have to do. Once you select them, now you'd be able to open this up. You'd be able to tap on this little icon, go right inside of here, respond back, do your text message back. Maybe it's a game where you have to figure something out with a calculator. So you're gonna have your little split screen view right here. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do with not only Game Launcher, but Game Booster. Again, I wanted to highlight this little shortcut icon here because this definitely saves a bunch of time uh, and it saves a little headache of getting out of a game when you really don't want to if you're looking for something to pop up. Now this next one is going to be built inside of your Google search bar widget. So this is just your regular Google application. This is the way that you would want to sign up to get a part of the search lab. So the Google search labs is basically find what you're looking for in a faster, easier way with SGE, which is search generative experience. Get AI powered overviews with helpful information. And uh, there's also additional follow-ups with it. And it actually helps a lot. You'll, you'll normally find what you're looking for with its little baby overview. And then you have all the rest of everything else sitting there. You can even do some code tips, but I'm not really covering code tips with this one. It's mostly this right here, the SGE. So let's give this one a little example. So let's say that we go inside of Google uh, and let's just say that I wanted to tap on, you know, maybe Hertz in the news. So, you know, we're going on a trip pretty soon. I wanted to take a look at Hertz, take a look at a few other ones. And so this is that little generative AI portion sitting right here. And this is going to give you all of these details and also more follow-ups, more articles. So if you wanna do more follow-ups, you can do it right here. Here's some of the articles, and then you have all the rest of everything else right here that you're able to go through. So let's say that we take a look at another one. So let's say, you know, Samsung News, and if it doesn't pop up right away, just hit generate. And so now this is just going to go through some Samsung news that you may, you know, want to take a look at. Uh, so right here, you can expand it. You can view more. You can also hit on this little icon here. And so this is going to show you some recent articles and news stories. If you bring this down, it's going to just kind of show you a few things that was even in the past. Some of it from just recent, some of it from a couple years ago. But yeah, it's pretty fun to take a look at what AI is kind of popping up with all of its newses. And then here is, you know, Samsung Newsroom. This is where you can find the latest news on pretty much anything from Samsung. And then you have more follow-up questions, and then you have all the rest of them right here. So this is your top story. So basically, it's a overview that is right before the top stories 
which is again right before everything else underneath the more option. So how you're able to sign up for this one, and it's actually pretty fun. Let's say that you do Google search labs. If you put this inside of you know your normal Google search bar, uh, what you're able to do is this is how it's going to tell you how you can join the wait list. So right here, sign up for search labs. And when you go through here, you just want to go on your computer. This is giving you all of the details. I can also put this link below the video inside the description. You just want to hit on join wait list. I'm already a part of it, so I don't really want to leave it because I do love this little labs icon. Um, so it's basically the Google's search labs, again, AKA also called SGE, which stands for search generative experience, which is using AI powered overviews before everything else pops up. So I would definitely suggest going through, finding that website, signing up. I can link it below the video inside the description. So you can get that little icon up there. And then anytime that you search for anything, uh, you'll be able to have a little bit of AI information uh, before all the rest that you would normally see. And again, it usually gives you exactly what you're looking for along with more questions that you might want to ask. Feature number three is an application that you do have to download, but then after that, there is a couple things you do have to pretty much activate. When you go inside of the Play Store, all you'd have to search for is reading mode. So reading mode is made from Google, uh, and what you're able to do is any time that you go inside of a website or you're reading an article or whatever the case, what you're able to do is turn it into kind of a mini podcast. So this actually helped me when I was traveling the other day. Uh, I was driving and I didn't want to actually read an article. Something was sent to me. I wanted it to play it back for me. And what you can do is when you go through the setup process of the application, mine is set up to where I can press and hold on both the volume up and volume down at the same time for just two seconds, and then it'll actually read it back to me. The other thing that you can also do is you can go inside of all of your little search or your little settings icon which if you don't see it, you can just go to edit buttons and then you can find it up here. Reading mode will sit up here when you have it downloaded. All you have to do is just bring it inside of your quick settings. And then right there, you just tap on reading mode and now you just turn it into a little mini podcast. So this way, if you're driving, all you have to do is just hold the phone up to your ear, keep your eyes on the road. There's nothing else. You go inside of this quick little you know, reading section right here and now everything is to be read to you. So this way you can keep your eyes again on the road, not on your phone. You can just listen to anything you want. Sometimes it just helps in general for accessibility reasons. If you, if it's harder to read the screen, there's a bunch of different settings you can change. I covered every single thing about that application in a previous video. Maybe I can link it right up over here that you can take a look at. It's a very, very helpful. Again, instead of reading, you can have it being read to you kind of like a little podcast. You can change the way that the text looks and also the voices that is reading uh, your story to you. Now, this next feature is one that maybe you already have turned on, but this is something that I always have to make sure is on every single one of my phones. And that is the do not disturb option. So all you'd have to do is when you pull down your settings, you just want to find where that little quick little settings is. You want to press and hold. And I'm not just talking about turning it on. I'm talking about putting it onto a schedule. So mine is set up every single day. I titled it basically as sleeping. So it'll turn on at 11 p.m. and then it turns off at 6.30 a.m. So basically once 11 o'clock happens, anything that's coming through, I'm not getting nothing other than my alarm that will pop off, you know, the following morning. Um, but usually right around 6.30 or 7, anytime that I move my phone, like the second I move my phone, it knows that I am now up and then some of those notifications is gonna actually start coming through. So it's a way that you can keep your phone silent at night. You're not gonna really miss anything. You know, unless if, you know, if you go to like calls and text messages, you can turn on this option here. So maybe if you feel like, oh, well, maybe I have to make sure that a contact is coming in, you can actually allow a contact to come in no matter what. Uh, so if you know for a fact something could happen at night when you're sleeping from one of your contacts, you can just add them into the allow during do not disturb or the repeat caller. So if they call more than once within 15 minutes, then maybe it could be important and you can activate this one. So if you are afraid of that, you can go through these settings more. But really the one I wanna highlight here is just put it on a schedule. You don't have to turn it on every single night and just you know do the option of sleeping. Through here, I, you know, I titled it, I selected every single day, and I said from 11 to 6.30, don't bother me. And then you hit on save. And that's pretty much it for the do not disturb option. Feature number five is a way that you can protect and save your battery life just a little bit. And it's a way that your phone learns from you and it turns it on 
only when it needs to. So what you can do, it's called adaptive battery, is you wanna go inside of your settings, you wanna go inside of battery and device care, and then as you scroll on down, uh, you just actually, you just wanna click right there for battery, then you scroll on down. This is where you see this option here that is called more battery settings and adaptive battery. So it's really gonna be based on what you're doing. So it knows that usually around this time at night, I'm always doing something with the phone, and so it's actually just in regular standard performance. Now, when it knows that it doesn't need to be as you know uh, battery used, it can go on a lighter situation. So then it can go inside of this prior. It prioritizes battery life and cooling efficiency over processing you know speed. So if you wanted to kind of have your phone go automated, switch between light and standard, light and standard again, it's going to go light anytime it knows that you're normally not on your phone. And it's not going to really make a huge, massive difference in terms of usage, but you will see a little bit of a difference with you having a little bit more battery at the end of the day with that adaptive battery on. And now the very last one is one that I hope you guys know about. It's a way that you can diagnose and go through diagnostics of not only your phone, but anything that you are kind of connected to when it comes down to Samsung accessories like a watch or Galaxy Buds. And so what you want to do is make sure that you have Samsung members application. Now, inside of the Samsung members application, you can go right over here to support. Now, this right here is your phone diagnostic. So you can actually just go through here and you can test a bunch of things. So you can make sure your flashlight is working good. Your sensors are working the way they're supposed to. The power restart status, vibration, speaker, the mic, the camera, Bluetooth, fingerprint recognition, S Pen touching, S Pen hovering. There's a lot of things that you can do. You can tap on any of them uh, and then you just basically, you know, let's just test it again. Turn it on. Yep, it turned on right there. Is it on and working properly? Yes, and that's pretty much it. And then it shows that you have tested one of them, but not only just your phone, but also some of your connected devices as well. So right now, I do have my Galaxy Watch 5 Pro that is connected. Now, if I take my, my Galaxy Buds 2 Pros, what I need to do is get out of the application. And now that I'm connected via Bluetooth, if I just go right back in, so let's say that this was already opened up and in my ears, um, now it's gonna show two things. And this is something that was new that was added in, I believe, earlier this year. So now I can test my Galaxy Buds 2 Pros uh, as well as the Watch 5 Pro. So with this one, you have seven different things that you can test, the speaker, the touch sensor, inner detection, check for updates. And then when it comes down to the watch, uh, this one's going to have 15 things. So there's a few additional things you can test on the watch. And it's just kind of a way to make sure that everything is just, you know, up and running properly. So this one is just the Samsung members application. This is also where you would search for if you wanted to get on any of the betas, you know, the beta program for the watch, the beta program for the phone. Usually it's right up here in a banner. If not, it'll be inside of benefits. So a lot of times that's why most people have the Samsung members application or if they would like to read things, ask questions, whatever the case. Uh, but over here in support, this is where you can do the phone diagnostics as well as your uh, couple connected devices. And so that is it for today's video. This is six different features or things that you should enable. You should definitely try out on your phone. You know, maybe you've played with them in the past. Maybe you just learned about them today. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of this video. Let me know what your favorite feature that we talked about today is. And also, if you guys appreciated this video, make sure you guys give this thing a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit and subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.